Welcome to Metro Simulator Beta. Arriving into the station is the first of five unique trains we're going to feature today. This is the new Glasgow subway stock. Although designed to be driverless, these trains will initially run with a train operator up front, as the line is already capable of fully automatic and cab signalled manual operation. The train operator is expected to eventually be replaced with an onboard supervisor who will operate the train in emergency situations only. In Metro Simbita, the train offers manual operation with cab signalling. Although the signalling used in the simulator is based on the Dutch ATB system, it's still very similar to the actual Glasgow subway. Between stations, the player follows a protected target speed, which is usually fixed to the line speed, as the blocks are the length of one station to the next. The subway is an all-stop service, so stopping patterns couldn't be easier. When you see a platform, stop at it, open the doors, and wait for a permissive light signal before closing the doors and continuing. If the signal at the end of a platform is restrictive, a buzzer will sound every 7 seconds as the train enters the platform. This is cancelled with activation of a dead man switch while the train's moving, but doesn't need to be cancelled while stationary and awaiting a permissive signal. These new trains are currently undergoing a 2,000 mile testing program in real life and are not featured in Train Simulator's Glasgow subway add-on. So Metro Simbita is currently the only way to experience the future of the subway. We now move to the London Underground and the S7 stock. Although various trains from the network are modelled, for the most part the cab signalling systems are based on the Dutch ATB system with a London Underground overlay. As the BVE simulator does a far better job of modelling these systems, there's little point playing the inferior Metro Sim versions. However, the S7 is still traditionally operated on suburban lines, with colour light signals and posted speed limits. This operating mode is modelled perfectly in Metro Sim Beta, which serves as a great way to experience more S7 running once you're tired of the Just Trains Metropolitan line for Train Simulator Classic. Although the route in Metro Sim Beta is fictional, the scenery, station styles and signalling layouts feel authentic to the real thing. Departing the depot is our first adventure in light rail. This KTM CityLink tram operates on dedicated tramways and uses the ZUB cab signalling system. ZUB is similar to ATB in that operation is based on a protected target speed. However, some vehicles with ZUB, such as this tram, also display a visual braking curve to the operator when the target speed decreases. Colour light signals are also a feature of ZUB lines. They're mostly used to display a restrictive or permissive aspect for departing a platform, with distance signals used where necessary. With an all-stops timetable and an easy-to-understand signalling system, driving the KTM CityLink is the perfect introduction to light rail operation. Heading underground once more, we meet the Soviet 81717 Metro train. Unique in its retro modernism, it combines 1970s design with 1990s cab signalling. Driving this train is simple. A protected target speed is displayed in the cab. Apply the throttle and the train will not exceed it. As the target speed decreases, brake to match the new target speed displayed. 
It's common for no target speed or an amber 10 or 20 km per hour limit to be displayed on approach to stations. These are restrictive signals and the train shouldn't leave the station until a permissive target speed is displayed in green. When restrictive signals are shown, the dead man switch will need cancelling every 7 seconds until the train is stationary. With a permissive signal we can close the doors and leave the station. There are a few more complications relating to driving this train on this route, so let's take a look at those. The amber signal displayed here signifies that the points ahead are set against the train. If the signal doesn't clear, we'll have to stop at the next S marker along the route. The dead man switch alarm also sounds and must be cancelled every 7 seconds when that signal is displayed. By the time we reach the S marker, the signal has cleared and we can continue into the station. Trains also run very close together on this route. We can see a train in the platform ahead of us. The blocks are marked out by magnets along the track. If we passed the magnet under a restrictive signal and entered an occupied block, ATB would stop the train. Some scenarios on this route also feature reversals. If the amber route signal is displayed at the end of an intermediate platform, as shown here, Check the timetable, as it's probably time to switch cabs and head back the way you came. Reversals at terminal stations don't usually display this signal, instead the train shunts ahead into a siding under a permissive signal, and then reverses out on a different track. It's now time for my favourite train and route in Metro Simbita, the Austin TFS tram running on city streets. This tram operates under ROZ, or drive on site, rules during street running. Signals are very simple, a vertical line for proceed and a horizontal line for stop. Maximum permitted speed is 30 km per hour, with a recommendation of 15 on curves. Stop at every curbside tram stop, and that's about as complex as street running gets. As the tram approaches a junction, a route indicator is displayed trackside. Some of these switches are protected, so an overspeed tram will trigger a brake application. The trams even feel weighty as they cross points. Listen to the sound on this curve. After the street running portion is complete, this route extends onto dedicated light rail tracks. The tram stops at a major station with colour light signalling before heading onto a grade separated line with ZUB cab signals. On this section, the tram reaches 70 km per hour and is signalled down to 50 on approach to stations. On this all-stop service, before the tram can continue after each stop, a proceed aspect must be displayed on the colour light signal at the end of the platform. This tram offers a truly unique mix of street and railway running, and it's relaxing and fun as well. There is one more honourable mention in the showcase of unique trains in Metro Simbita. This is the Amsterdam 12G tram, which is mostly found on residential streets. Running at up to 50 km per hour with ROZ signalling, the 12G almost feels like a bus on rails. I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the unique experiences provided by Metro Simulator Beta. The download link is in the description below. If you found this video entertaining or informative, please drop a like and feel free to subscribe for regular sim content. Take care, and I'll see you next time.